another constraint that children have when they're trying to figure out uh, the meaning of a new word that is the lexical meaning, the word is lexical, uh, is something called the mutual exclusivity assumption, right? And this is basically assuming that a new word does not overlap in meaning with a known word, right? Uh, and so in some sense, kids hate synonyms, right? True synonyms that are that are literally the same meaning. And if you actually think about it for a moment, it's hard to come up with a word that, that really is the exact same meaning as another word. I mean, typically, there are just subtle differences in meaning, uh, say, between, let's just think of words like um, daddy or papa or father. You're like, okay, well, they all kind of mean the same thing. Yes and no, right? So daddy has this sense of, of endearment. Maybe papa also has, but maybe, maybe has a different sort of dialect association with it versus father is more formal, right? There are these subtle differences in meaning. So adults kind of hate synonyms too. Adults kind of, uh, we in our lexicons kind of <laughs> apply this in a more subtle way. Children just are a little bit more direct about it and they really just assume, again, a new word is not gonna overlap in meaning with a known one. So here, let's say that they know that this is a cup, right? And someone says, look, you can see the handle. And so they're like, all right, um, well, they can't be talking about this whole object. It's like the, one of the first assumptions children might make is that, you know, a new word refers to the whole object. But if they know that whole object is called a cup, and especially if maybe their attention is drawn to this little part of the cup, they might realize, oh, handle refers to this part of the object rather than the whole object. So they're using mutual exclusivity to say, oh, handle cannot refer to this entire thing, maybe my first guess, because that already has a word for it. That's called cup. Therefore, mutual exclusivity says don't refer to that. That's not what handle means. Handle must mean something else, right? So that's just a demonstration of how mutual exclusivity would work, in this case, to overcome uh, maybe a whole object assumption for a new word. Uh, there's actually a very nice uh, what's it, link space video here, which I, I'm not going to watch in the interest of time, but you, it goes through, again, the mutual exclusivity assumption in a very nice way. Um, but it is not without its own problems, right? It seems like, okay, great, you, you can really get like you maybe parts of things or parts of objects. Um, but, you know, there's, remember I was talking before about subtle nuances of meaning, like, you know, papa versus daddy versus father. Those actually you know, they mean slightly different things, but you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at the referent, right? They all refer to like, you know, the male figure, caretaker figure, right? And, you know, but they're just sort of getting at different aspects of the meaning. So here is an example with a kitty. So if the child knows that this is a kitty and someone says, look at the kitty, they're like, yep, that's the kitty. He's a Siamese. They're like, oh, uh, mm, Siamese can't mean the whole kitty because I already have a word for that, that's, that's kitty. Uh, hmm, what does it mean? Does it mean a part of the kitty? Does it mean, does it mean this, he's, he's this, or does it mean he's fuzzy? Like, what, is it, what does it mean? So mutual exclusivity can cause these problems when we have overlapping labels for the same referent, and that's, uh, you know, that's just a tricky thing, right, about the way words, uh, word meanings uh, connect to their reference in the world.